what's up, guys? I'm over here with my good friend Mark. Chris? Yes, yeah. that's my name. Yeah, yeah. Like, I guess yeah. so, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, yeah, Crab Custom, of course. <laughs> and we got some pretty dang cool stuff that we want to show you and we want to discuss about the 9x39 ammo that there's a lot of rumors after Shorts, a lot of people asking questions. And um, since Mark was having actually short display and a couple of rifles in different boots, and um, personally, I have a lot of people ask me stuff too, and I, I bet you too. So we decided to do a quick video with him and he's gonna explain you a little bit about the ammo and he's gonna show up a couple of his products. Yeah, so I'd like to talk about the background on everything just a little bit and uh, dispel some rumors and uh, tell you why we like it and all of that. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I'd like to just show right off the bat, which is kind of the, the most obvious hitting um, reason for having this round is this is a, a blackout round uh, you can get them uh, heavier than this and uh, this is the 9 by 39 round um, this round outweighs uh, well it's either in the 245 range or 278 and uh, it's very hard hitting subsonic ammo um, and you can tell from uh, uh, looking at this uh, how it mm -hmm. would help put down the larger animal. Um, yep. We're also having some people make uh, solid projectiles for them that are for hunting, that fragment and create secondary missiles and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> This is the Tule ammo that's in town, and this is the Wolf ammo. Uh, later on, I will uh, give a list of stores selling this, and you can actually uh, get it from us as well. Um, and I guess that would be it. Okay, do you want to start showing... Is there any of these? Uh, I think you got one of the, actually the first one you ever built was actually this one. Right. Okay. Yeah, one of them, um, right? yeah. This is a gun that before 9x39 was a round, JD Jones and I got together and we made a round that looked like a pretty straight walled AK round and it was actually uh, 458, or not 458, a. Uh, a uh, 358 Remington okay. round and uh, what was cool about these rounds was they were 250 grains um, and they track all 30 rounds in an AK magazine just perfectly but this had to go by the wayside because we realized it'd just be too hard to uh, introduce a new cartridge and mm -hmm. that's why I was very happy to see that uh, uh, the 9x39 was starting to come into the country mm -hmm. um, and what we got here um, well we talked about the ammo uh, the next thing is the suppressors uh, that Liberty suppressor made for us. Mm -hmm. Now these, uh, we tried these rounds through rifle suppressors, opened up rifle suppressors, and we did not get nearly as good a results. Um, I had put a, a pistol suppressor on it and we got started to get much better results. Now I don't know if you can focus in on that, but that can is made by Liberty suppressor and it attaches to our IMS system and it has a, uh, a timed collar on it. So this is adjustable to spin on and the detent will click in and you have no chance of it getting uh, dislodged or loose while you're firing it. Of course, you use your um, IMS, right? The, your adapter. The, the yeah. IMS. Now, mm -hmm. the IMS on these. Now, this will not fit on a standard IMS. Okay. Uh, the nine x thirty-nine guns, all of them, 
have been shortened up to optimize length versus flash hiding capability. Uh, this will suppress flash uh, real well at this length. Okay. And uh, it also, you know, facilitates the, uh, the uh, suppressor. Um, this one is probably, uh, what we're going to end up with is two basic models, really. Um, one is going to look very similar to this, only built on a Sharps receiver. Uh, this was a prototype, so I didn't cut in the M-lock. <clears throat> we had the extra long uh, pick rail because it just helps you stabilize your gun better. You know, and you can't put it on the suppressor, yeah. nor do you want to. Um, you can kind of do. Uh, <laughs> and then this is an integral scope mount. This is meant for a little bit more short range type of work. Okay. Um, however, we are, and I will switch over to the Sharps gun, which was a little too laborious to make uh, in this configuration. So uh, it's the front end's going to look very similar to the green gun, but you'll see here on the side uh, we've also got um, the uh, Midwest Industries mount for the uh, rifle scope. And uh, that is, I've got mixed emotions on some people want these to be uh, guns that they just use Kentucky windage on and then others would like to uh, dope them out and uh, be as precise as you can. Um, and so the, the finished product will be built on a Sharps receiver uh, and look very similar to the green gun as far as the front end goes and everything. Mm -hmm. um, another one that we're going to sell uh, that we're going to start out with first because we're the closest to completion on this um, is the Galil. Uh, this is the Galil Ace that we've uh, removed all the plastic furniture from, put on a steel trigger guard, made our, you know, put our sweep uh, mag release on it. And it's got the left-handed charging handle. It's really kind of built uh, for a scope. And uh, that's one of the things that's kind of cool about it is if you're laying there, you know, you don't have to reach over your gun, stuff like that. Um, this gun, this will be one of the first ones. And everybody's talking to me about price, but, uh, and I can't give them that information um, until we build 10 and the barrels will be in in a bit. Uh, they're gonna be uh, nitrated barrels. And uh, as soon as we make 10, we will come up with a price. Uh, but with this gun, um, we actually got uh, four and a half inches at 200 yards. And um, it wasn't a particularly good day for the guy that was shooting it. So we're hoping it's a little better than that. But for a gun that was supposed to only get three inches at 100, uh, we're real happy about that. So, um, and then this comes with our, uh, our slimline Galil uh, kind of going back to the uh, micro Galil look, um, and uh, so you got the gear with the oh right, all these guns are pistols, by the mm -hmm. way, um, so that you don't all you have to do you don't have to go through two licenses. You can go through one license to get the suppressor. And uh, Liberty Suppressor made this. I don't know if they have the, the video on uh, uh, on YouTube. They sent it to me. And uh, the decibel readings uh, unofficially are from 120 to 130. Uh, it sounded particularly quiet, even though you, you never can really tell in film. The best mm -hmm. you can do is compare it to the mechanical noises around it and get an assessment, but I think anybody could make a, a suppressor look good on video oh, if yeah. they wanted to, you know. Absolutely. So, uh, and that's basically it. We'll have uh, hard news for you um, later on. 
um, also one point I missed uh, was uh, we are also having specialized bags made and um, they were concerned about getting it in a uh, AK receiver and I said do not worry about that make it as wide as you need it to be uh, to accommodate the round to function correctly. Uh, part of the bullet flight's accuracy is making sure that the bullet auger does not get damaged as the gun is feeding. And uh, 300 blackout, um, I don't know what the uh, effective range is. I know that uh, these will start to destabilize, the, that's the 9x39, after about 300 yards, it will start to destabilize. But up to 300, um, it should be very good. Um, we haven't done any 300 yard testing yet, but uh, that's coming up with our final prototype, well, not prototypes, with our final, uh, with the official guns that we're going to come out with, uh, we'll, we'll do a lot more testing and uh, be able to give you a better idea of what, what you can expect out of the gun. And past that, um, like I said, uh, we, we will disclose the name of the magazine makers uh, a bit later and um, Liberty Suppressor is the people that spent the time to make this suppressor specifically, even though it will work for other calibers, uh, for uh, the 9x39. And I believe that's it. Um, I do have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, actually, two questions. So, um, the first one is, so if somebody, let's say, live, uh, unfortunately, one of the stupid states, like I do, uh, do you, would you recommend to buy a 9x39 anyway, just because it's an interesting round, accurate, maybe more than a 300 blackout, just for range stuff and even... I, 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 or do you well, think it would be a waste, you know, because you can actually suppress it or... Um, that would be up to the shooter. I know a lot of people like slow, big, mm -hmm. moving rounds. Okay. One thing that they did say with the... Uh, uh, the Spetsnaz started using the VSS and, and the 9x39 mm -hmm. type guns uh, in house clearing more because it, it uh, was more effective in neutralizing mm -hmm. targets uh, quickly. That was my question because I like the 300 blackout uh, sp speed, but also I like when you're looking at the target, the actual stopping power of the 300 blackout, you know what I mean? So if you're in a close, com close combat, shit, uh, sorry, a close, <laughs> if you ever happen, I like the Tenor Black Out impact versus the 5.56, for example. So oh, I'm seeing the bullet on the on the 9x39, and mm. it's actually <laughs> more clearly. Well, uh, honestly, I was a little surprised that it put you a bullet that was subsonic, even though it was twice as heavy. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it it doesn't seem like it to me uh, that it would put you down faster, but they they say that's what's going on. Yeah. So because um, again, I, I'm. I'm, I'm a big fan of Triangle Blackout. I knew the existence of, existence, sorry, that ammo from Gun Magazine and so forth, Russian Gun Magazine. And so I might even buy one for myself and maybe if I go hunting somewhere, somebody can borrow me a suppressor. I don't know because <laughs> unfortunately we, we can't for now. Right. For now. But you know, you never know. Um, that's it, right? I think I would like. Well, I would like to, unless you got something else to add, I would like to thank you for spending, you know, give, give us some of your time for explaining the ammo and the rifles and and that's it. I mean, have you, you've cool been deal. very nice as usual. Mm -hmm. If you guys don't know Crab Custom, you should shame yourself because you've probably been living in a desert island for the last, like, 25 years? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's it. And um, you have a website? Uh, www.scrapcustom.com, right? Yeah, cool. And uh, if you have any more information, you can find an email probably over there. And the crab crew is always very nice and they'll answer to your questions. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but on our scope rails, uh, we don't just uh, put them in there. We've got uh, four dowel pins, you can only see two, that are in, um, in this base. Uh, I mean, to hold it rigid to the receiver. Yes. Can you see it? Yeah, it's clearly well mounted. Right. Well, if it's not, 
you might be surprised. I've seen some interesting stuff. <laughs> yeah. Some monkey, monkey jobs. But uh, that's it. Of course, uh, you know, you know, I'm a fan of your stuff and uh, your products. You got quickly. If you guys don't know them, if I my still one minute. We have a so what is it? This one. Of course, we have, sorry. We have the stock adapters. You know, Crab, which is one of the, my preferred ones. Crab Custom. I have actually two, two or three guns that use them. Which, if you have a regular AK, like an old school AK, you can put a scope adapter. It's going to help you with the cheek raise, which is a very important thing. Uh, if you want to upgrade one of your existing AKs, of course. And they make the safety, which I think is one of the best products ever. And I recommend it anybody. Because it's, um, it's a good precaution if you go to range. I mean, honestly, it's, it's a good thing. And especially chamber flag and stupid thing that makes your life way easier. In other situation can be useful, you know. And the the IMS, I, I have one on my KV13 Mod 2, and I like it. I love it. It's a really cool design. I like the fact if you are allowed to use a can, it makes one of the easiest design, I think, to change it to to install and sorry suppressor. Um, other than that, I've been talking. A lot of good thing about you, Mark, and your product, so I don't think I should go ahead, I think, otherwise they think I'm getting paid from you or something, but... Which well, I'll later. pay you later. Yeah, later. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, yeah, give a, go and check out their uh, social media, and thank you again to Mark, thank you again to the Crab Custom, give a like to the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to, and i see you next time. God bless you, and God bless America.